what's up? My name is Technoba here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this quick video, I'll be talking about how you can get better FPS and better latency in most VR games that you play using PC VR. This is linking your headset to your PC, whether it's a Vive, a Valve Index, or even an Oculus Quest that you use the PC link with. That's my case. Essentially, something like VR requires huge displays or at least huge amounts of pixels to fool your eyes into thinking something's closer to real, get rid of the screen door, etc. And of course, having low latency is incredibly important when it comes to not having motion sickness. All of these things require powerful hardware or at least really optimized games that don't use too much. However, if you find yourself struggling or you'd just like to try and see how much better things can get, there is a way of getting around this. If you know about squeezing more power out of a computer, you've probably heard about NVIDIA's NIS and AMD's FSR. AMD's FSR is the open source one that works on all graphics cards. There's also DLSS, which uses AI, and that isn't really the main focus of this. But the main focus in general is upscaling, rendering at a smaller resolution and scaling it up to be bigger. Rather than just increasing the pixel size, it actually fills in the gaps and does a pretty good job of doing so. Most of this will be centered around AMD's FSR, but Nvidia's NIS is supported as well. So let's go ahead and begin. As previously mentioned, AMD's FSR is open source, and previously there was a project called OpenVR FSR. Essentially, you download a DLL by clicking the latest release here, then the zip file, and you open it up. Essentially, next to the main EXE, you'll be dropping the DLL file to replace the existing one, and the config file to adjust how the mod works. Then you can go ahead and start using AMD FSR and NVIDIA NIS in pretty much whatever Steam VR game you'll be playing. However, this was relatively limited to only open VR, but there is another project called the VR Performance Toolkit, which you'll also find in the description down below and is the main focus of the video. This one supports NVIDIA NIS, AMD FSR, and AMD CAS, Contrast Adaptive Sharpening. On top of this, it also supports the Oculus runtime and OpenVR runtime. I would assume more will be added here over time as things go on and development gets further. This one works a bit differently. There's a DXGI DLL file and a YML file for config, so we're not actually replacing anything in most cases. Instead, we're just dropping it next to the game's main EXE, and when the game fires up, it'll look at the DLL and use that instead of digging deep into your computer for it, as far as I understand. So this should work in most games as long as they're open to VR, which unfortunately is the older standard that not all games are using nowadays, or they're using the Oculus runtime. In the future, I'm sure this will be expanded. Simply head to this GitHub page linked down below and click the latest release over here under the releases section to go across to the download. Click the zip file to download it and click in it to open it up. When it's done, we see a couple of files, dxgi.dll and vrperfkit.yml are the two files that we drop next to the game's main exe, wherever this may be. If it's a 32-bit game or it simply doesn't launch at all, you may want to try the x86 DLL over here instead of this 64-bit. Most games, of course, will be 64-bit nowadays. So to actually install this, we need to navigate to where the game is installed. For me, I'll be using a simple example such as VR Chat. I'll simply right-click it, click Manage, and then Browse Local Files. When the folder pops up, all we have to do is push it across to the side, assuming we know where the main exe files are. In VRChat's case, they're located here. And looking at the GitHub page, there's some information on where you'll find the main exes for Unreal Engine games, which is quite a few of them. It'll be in whatever game it is, binaries, win64, and next to shipping.exe here. Once you've located the correct place to drop these files, drag them out of the zip and into this folder here, and we've now successfully installed the mod. Now, simply firing up the game or whatever it is, you should see in the same folder that a vrperfkit.log file appears, and if it does, congratulations, it's now been loaded successfully. Though, of course, we haven't actually configured anything, and I haven't got my headset plugged in. Opening this file, we'll see some information about it, our current settings, and a bunch of debug information if things are crashing for any reason. I'll close out of the game for now and head back to the game's folder. I'll then open the vrperfkit.yml file with a text editor such as Notepad. Inside of here, we can configure the mod to do specific things. We can choose between FSR, NIS, and CAS. By default, it's set to CAS. However, I'd suggest using AMD's FSR by entering FSR next to the method here. 
Of course, we can disable it or enable it completely all the way up here. Essentially, this is a configuration file. Everything with a hash before it is a comment and can be ignored. It's usually information, setting, information, setting, just to help make things more simple. Next up, we have the render scale at which the game will be rendered at and upscaling will be used to help it. Of course, you can drop this number to render at a lower resolution and upscale further. We have a sharpness option and a performance optimization option here, which is incredibly interesting. Essentially, we can set a radius and this will use a higher quality rendering for the center part where your eye is going to be facing straight forwards. And as we get further towards your peripheral vision, it'll use a much cheaper method of upscaling called bilinear sampling. This can result in a lot more things being blurry. But of course, if you're looking straight forwards, you're not going to notice blurry things in your peripheral vision as we're simply just used to that being our blind spot in real life. So leaving it as default is probably the best here. Raising this will usually cause lower FPS as we're using more expensive upscaling for more than just the dead center where we're looking. We have an advanced option here that I won't be covering about text sampling, the MIP bias, and scrolling down further, we have a whole lot of information and advanced settings about some things that I won't be covering here. Then we have debug mode that we can set to true if things aren't working properly or you'd like to help debug. And at the very bottom, we have hotkeys. This is the more important section that you'll probably want to mess around with. We can turn hotkeys on or off. I'd recommend leaving these on all the time. And as you can see, all of the hotkeys are currently set to control F1 through seven or eight and Alt F1, Alt F2 at the very bottom. Essentially, we can toggle debug mode with control F1 and you can customize this to be pretty much whatever keys you'd like. We can cycle through the available upscaling methods using control F2, increase the upscaling circle radius, which we touched on earlier, or decrease it, increase the upscaling sharpness, or decrease it, toggle the application MIP bias, which I didn't cover, and more importantly, take a screen grab of the final post-processed upscaled image if you'd like to compare them later. This saves the screen grab as a DDS file next to the DLL, control F8 by default. And further down, we have some more advanced options. With everything set and customized to your liking, save the file when you close it and open up the game once more. And now it should be using your brand new settings. You can verify this by looking at the vrperfkit.log file that should now be emptied and repopulated with information when you fire up the game. You can see it's using FSR upscaling over here. Super simple. At this point, you should have much better latency and hopefully much better FPS, leading to an overall better experience while you're playing VR games through the Oculus Link, Steam VR, or anything like that. It's a really useful tool and more developers should definitely be embracing this more on a first party rather than a modding third party basis. Unfortunately, this doesn't work with every game. It only supports Oculus Runtime and Open VR Runtime games. So, of course, that will be expanded in the future, at least, hopefully. But for now, at least, you should get much better experiences while you're playing your favorite VR games. So, thank you all for watching. My name's been Technoba here for Troubleshoot. Once again, links are all down in the description below. And I'll see you all next time. Ciao.